All right, good morning, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Cartoon Edition of All Things Nerdy with your host, Robert Jurdy. That's me. And uh, you see I've got sleepy eyes, but uh, we're doing good this morning. And today we are talking about a very important 80s cartoon, Gem and the Holograms. Now, I just watched the pilot episode, which is episode one, season one, episode one. And as I've noticed, they're all to be continued. But let me tell you, it is a great show. Uh, so the general, the general base um, is that we've got a girl named Jerrica, and her father passes away, leaving her orphaned. And she gets in her inheritance two things. She gets a, was it Starlight Music Company, plus a home for foster girls. This is her inheritance right and so her big goal is keeping the foster home up and running but apparently despite the fact that her dad was like a record executive mogul the place is in shambles like the electricity doesn't work the plumbing doesn't work the vacuums don't work they're trying to vacuum around the house and it explodes um so so she needs money to keep this going and what we find out is that the father gave half of the company to her and half of the company to this guy named Eric Raymond. And he's like the villain. He's great. He's probably one of my favorite characters because he's just like, you're dumb. You're dumb and I'm going to take your money. All right. Have a good day. You're stupid. Bye. Like he's just this great, doesn't care villain. And um, so she goes to the record company like, I need money. And uh, this Eric guy is like, uh, well, too bad, because even though you have half of the company, you're just a baby. You're just a baby, and I'm going to take over. And I'm going to take over by introducing the world to the most popular musical band of all time, the Misfits. And like out of nowhere, this and that's what this is. This cartoon is a musical. It is like little, little like little, you know, storytelling moments with these musical numbers. I mean, that first episode must have had at least four numbers, but. It's like the Misfits, and the Misfits come in, and they do this really cool musical number. And Jerrica's like, this is baloney. Uh, I'm not going to let this happen. And so she leaves, and they're laughing at her, like, what are you going to do, dum-dum? You can't, you know, what are you going to do? We're gonna, we, got, we have your dad's business, and uh, we're the bad guys, pretty much. And so she's all upset, and she goes home, and she finds a package that was left for her. And so she opens up the package, and it's these earrings. And they're these, like, sparkly pink, like, star earrings. And so she puts them on, and she realizes that these, there's something magical about these earrings. And so it turns out these earrings were a gift from her father. And they introduce her to this disembodied spirit voice called Synergy. And what we find out is that her and the rest of the girls, or at least a handful of the girls, get in a car and they follow this synergy to a... And actually, this is a pretty cool, uh, a pretty cool base of operations. It's a drive through drive through drive-in movie theater. And so you've got the big screen of the movie theater, but in the base, they drive right through, like Harry Potter style. And it is a secret lair, like the dad... Um, this this person who the spirit who's been following around turns out is an is an AI is a sentient AI being, and this dad this record mogul created this to be the ultimate very eighties to be the ultimate synthesizer, right? And it can create anything, and so it can create music, but it can cre also create these hard hologram images like. Uh, like Total Recall, you know, you turn on the thing and I'm over here. Um, except not bound to those sort of movements. Like your creations can do whatever they want. You know, but whatever you want them to do to a degree. But, um, and, but she finds out that they, he, dad, her dad left her all this stuff. Left her the AI synthesizer, Synergy. Um, left her kind of a Captain Planet look. I mean, not quite the bright colors, but like this sort of spirit purple hair and kind of cool. Um, but he also left her like a room full of clothes, like a huge wardrobe, and then all these musical instruments and a car that's, I mean, it's cool, but it's also a little, what do you call it, garish? <laughs> it's, 
It's like purple, yellow, green. It's like the Joker's car. It looks very Joker car. Um, but it turns out that, um, so they have all these things, and it turns out that uh, Eric, I keep saying, I think that's his name, Eric Raymond, um, has set up a battle of the bands with some lousy bands, and the uh, misfits are going to win. And so Jerick is like, I have an idea. So we go the next day to the battle of the bands, right? And the, <laughs> the best parts is they show one of the, like, you know, Eric Raymond's like, all right, and thank you. This was the this was uh, our final band, the Limp Lizards, and you see this band, and they're all, all right, thank you guys. Like this, like this worst, the worst band, but it just tells you like, because earlier he was like, yeah, we're doing a battle of the bands, and all the bands are crappy. <laughs> they're all crappy because, and the Misfits are the least crappy, and so they're gonna win. And so at this battle of the bands, people are there, and the. And the limp lizards play, and he's like, all right, hear it for the limp lizards, and nobody claps. And she's like, all right, I guess the misfits are the winners. Let's bring out the misfit. And as soon as he's about to say it, like, very revenge of the nerds is what it reminds me of. Like, you know, we need to save the nerd school. We need to save the foster girls home, uh, you know, the VHS store that we run. We need to save it, right? And also video. And... Um, and so, out of nowhere, Jam and the Holograms appear, and they start playing, and another musical number, and it's huge. Everybody freaks out. They're like, yes, Jam and the Holograms are amazing. And so they very obviously win this uh, Battle of the Bands, right? And, and, the, and Eric is furious. He's like, what are you doing here? Who invited you? And Jem, and uh, that's the thing. So we see Jem and the Holograms, but it's not Jerrica and the Holograms, or Jerrica and her friends. It's Jam and the Hologram, so completely different. I mean, you can tell, but still, it's Jerrica in this pur in purple, in this like pink wig, and so she's Jem, the lead singer. So very Hannah Montana style, or uh, Clark Kent, Superman, whatever you know, double lives, and so she's trying to keep that up. So she's like, Eric Raymond's like, who invited you to this battle of the bands? And Jem is like, why she did, and she points to. She uses her hologram, boop, 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 and creates a version of Jerrica, like, on the other side of the courtyard. And so Eric's like, I'm going to go talk to her. And he starts walking over there, and she turns it off, and she changes, and she meets him. And in this crazy moment, like, they're, everybody's mic'd. <laughs> We're mic'd. Everybody's mic'd. And they can hear everything going on. And, um, and move, move, like, TV cameras, because this is a huge event, you know, that they set up. And he's like, the villain is like... Jerrica, how dare you? I'm taking this. Uh, this company is mine. And he's like just spilling the beans in front of everybody, like mics and cameras. And she's like, how dare you try to pass these, these uh, losers off as a band for my dad's record company, and I'm going to beat you. And he's like, well, why don't we have a battle of the bands in six months? And whoever wins, I'm going to try, and whoever's the most popular band, the Misfits or Jim and the Holograms, in six months wins the entire company your dad's company. And she's like, it's a deal. And so then out of nowhere, this dude is like, well, let me sweeten the pot. And he's like, I'm a movie, I'm a movie executive. And whoever wins this tournament, not only gets a movie contract, but gets to live in this fabulous mansion. And he pulls up this picture of a mansion he just has with him. And of course, everybody's freaking out. Like, that's what we want. And the misfits are like, uh, okay, uh, that's cool, we can do that. Let's start winning this by stealing all of Gem and the Holograms' uh, stuff. And so they go in there and they like steal the keyboards and the guitars they just got, all these instruments, and they put it in their van. The Misfits have an uh, A-Team van, by the way. It's pretty cool. It's a little cooler, I have to admit, than the uh, Joker car. That the Rock and Roadster is what it's officially called, Gem and the Holograms' sound. That's just me. Don't, you know, don't get mad at me. So the misfits take the instruments and speed off. And so there's a car chase between the rock and roadster and the minivan, or not minivan, and the like the eight the eighteen van the misfits have. And the misfits are chunking the 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 musical instruments out the window. And uh, and then and then the one of the holograms swerves and almost falls off a cliff. And so with the with the help of Jem and the, and a hologram of Jem they're able to um, flag someone down. The person they flag down 
is Rio. So let's introduce Rio into this equation. Rio Pacheco is Jerica's boyfriend. Um, and as we find, you know, Jer uh, Rio helps them out and he gets, you know, local boy saves a uh, famous rock band and all this good publicity for Jim and bad publicity for the Misfits and this guy's furious. Um, but we meet, but, you know, Ray Rio's the one that saves them and Rio is the boyfriend of Jerica, right? Nice, kind of like, a, he seems like a good dude, you know, maybe a little impetuous, but generally speaking, a pretty good dude. But... Um, he, we, and it's, it's teased a little bit. I just saw the pilot episode, but I'm sure it goes in more depth is this sort of like Jerrica, you know, his girlfriend, but he's also interested in Jem. He likes Jem. He can't explain why he likes Jem, but something about Jem, he really gets, he's, he's really feeling. And Jerrica is like <laughs> playing both sides. She's playing Jerrica and Jem. And she's like, well, like there's a scene, this is in the second episode, because of course I watched more than one episode, like it's pretty fascinating it's on a soap opera level. Um, but this thing they're playing with where Rio likes Jerrica, but Rio likes Jem, and Jem is like, oh, Rio, do you like me? And, and he's like, well, I do. And so there's this like, damn, dude, you're, you're playing both sides un unknowingly. And your girl knows it, and she's like letting it happen. So it's interesting. It's interesting to see what happens with like the love triangle between two people. Classic Spider-Man stuff, right? Um, but anyway, so the after the after they're saved and this you know huge Revenge of the Nerds moment where the Battle of the Bands and Jim and the Holograms win, they go back to the Starlight House, and they're like, man, it was a good day, but we still need to raise more money because the house that we live in for foster girls is in shambles and there's no electricity. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, we have foster girls here. We have children who live here. We need to up the ante, get the plumbing and the lights working. And so while they're devising plans on making money, Eric Raymond has sent a creepy looking dude to come in. He, he's, there's a great line where he's like, I don't, Eric's like, I don't want them. I don't want them hurt. I just want them uncomfortable. And he's like, Making people uncomfortable is my specialty. It's like, you're a creep. You're a straight up creep, okay? So he breaks into the girl's house and he's stealing junk, like an old clock and like a book. And then the girls break in on him and like, what are you doing? And, um, and he freaks out and he leaves and he, he rushes out. And as he rushes out, um, a, a lamp, a lantern, because they don't have any lights in the house. So they're all using like lanterns and matches or stuff like that. The lantern falls on the, on the ground. The whole house goes up in flames. Um, and so they're like, oh my God, what do we do? Our house that was uh, a wreck to begin with and <laughs> to be condemned uh, is now burned down. So what, what should we do? And what I kind of like about this show so far, other than one scene um, where Rio helps out, I feel like these these girls and women in this situation, Jim and the holograms and the girls of the Starlight Home, like they help themselves. Like they don't, and I just have whatever, but they don't need a man. <laughs> they don't need a man. They've got themselves and they do it. I mean, they're saving money. They're doing all these things. They're, they're working on fixing the house. I mean, they're pretty capable and don't need a dude. And you can see why this is like, because I know so many girls who are women now, but as girls loved this show growing up. And you can totally see it is 100% female empowerment. Like, you don't need a dude to be a rock star and have all this stuff. And, and, and it's not even the gifts. It's, you know, if we talk about um, the classic hero's journey, right? Or like Clash, I always think of Clash of the Titans. You know, you've got a girl who's usually been orphaned or a person who's usually been orphaned and then they, they find a mentor, a Yoda type, which is synergy, and they get all these magical gifts like a lightsaber or in Clash of the Titans, you know, the, the shield and the hat and the shoes and all that stuff. And then they grow. That's their journey, right? You know, um, and so this, this is perfectly, especially in this first episode, this origin story, it's this perfect hero's journey. Uh, and this girl growing and deciding to do 
things to better not only herself but the people around her. So it's a pretty awesome show. And in the end, what she does, and this is the the two, it ends a to be continued as the house is on fire. But what happens is, is that she's like, you know what? Our house is burned down, and we've got all these kids who are homeless now. Let's go perform a Jam in the Holograms concert on the lawn of that rich movie executive. And they do. They perform a rock band. They perform a concert. It's like 7 in the morning. They do a show, and it wakes the dude up, of course. Of course, the misfits are there, too. And uh, it's a huge hit. It's a huge gem in the holograms. Everybody comes, and it's a huge thing. And the, and the movie executive is like, what are you guys doing in my front yard? And she's like, well, our house burned down, and it was an impromptu concert because we need a place to stay. And the misfits are like, no, that mansion, nobody can use that mansion until the, until the six months, and, you know, that's not fair. And the rich mogul's like, I can do whatever I want with my house. Gem in the holograms. It's yours for now. And so all the holograms of the Foster girls move into this new home. So pretty much you've got a new mansion where they're living in, a new car, the Joker Mobile, the Rock and Roadster, uh, a wave of limitless supply of instruments and clothes, and these things to where they can be huge celebrities. So the setup is pretty awesome. You get it all in this first episode. You get all the villains, you know, like the sleazy producer, the misfits, this creepy henchman, um, all the different girls. And uh, to be honest with you, I feel like while Jem gets a lot of character development, right? Like she's kind of a reluctant hero, but she's kind of like a Kermit almost. Like she's just in charge, but people are always like, what do we do? What do we do? And she's the one that's got to figure stuff out. Your classic leader, like maybe a reluctant leader, um, but she still does it because she's trying to do good. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a fun show. It is a fun show. I really liked it. So if you're if you're interested, they're all on Tubi TV. Um, well, not maybe not all of them, but a handful because they're not on YouTube. And so that's why I, I try to change the format a little bit because I'm pretty sure they're going to snap it off YouTube if I put it on the whole episode. So I'll be showing clips throughout, you know, as, as I'm talking here. But um, it's on Tubi TV. You can see at least the first three episodes because that's what I watched last night. And um, man, yeah. And the, let me tell you what. The music is surprisingly catchy. There's a hint in the music to where, like, I feel like they borrowed whether purposely or not purposely, I think purposefully, they borrowed maybe hints and tones of the music of the times. Like, I'm listening to it and you can hear a little Lionel Richie kind of in there somewhere, or you can, you know what I mean? Um, but it's, I mean, the music is great. And apparently from what I understand is that in the toys, in the doll, in the gym dolls, um, you would get cassettes and the cassettes would have the songs. So you would, you would, you would be very familiar with the songs. Um, if you bought the toys, because you just pop them in your cassette player and listen to the songs over and over again. Uh, so pretty good. So all, all told, I will say Gem and the Holograms is a big hit. Watch it if you get a chance. Um, like I said, they're all on Tubi TV. Wow. Pretty great stuff. And you know, they're actually talking about doing a Gem re Now, there's been various Gem reboots. IDW Comics did a, a Gem comic series. I've actually bought a bunch of them. They were pretty cool. And then, just because I, I love comics and good stories. And then they're talking about Jem and the Holograms getting... Well, there was a terrible movie. Let's talk about it. 2015, I think it was 2015, 2014, 2015. They released Jem and the Holograms, the movie, which, which veered like very, very differently from the cartoon. I mean, it, it was, she was a rock band. She was a star of a rock band. But a lot of those mystical, magical science-based elements uh, were gone, and it just didn't connect. In fact, I think it's considered one of the biggest major studio movie flops ever. It was released, and like a week later, if even a week later, it was pulled out of theaters because it did so poorly. But that's what happens when you stray from the, from the original formula. Who's going to see it? You know, The gem people aren't going to see it because it's nothing like gem, and people who don't know gem are like, who cares? It's just another girl becoming a famous rock star story. So... Let's get a real gem. Let's get a real gem movie out there if we can. Um, but they're also talking about going forward now, a new gem animated series, sort of in the vein of what they did with the new She-Ra show. Um, so we'd be curious. I, I mean, I'd, I'd check it out. Um, 
I wasn't a big gem fan as a kid, but watching them now, they're actually pretty great. So, Saturday morning cartoons, uh, all things nerdy edition, gem and the holograms, definitely watch them if you get a chance. Uh, I really enjoyed them. So I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. Uh, thank you again for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, informal Saturday morning. We're having a good time. Hope you have some cereal, some coffee, and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, have a good one. Take care.